What finally triggered the revolution? Hunger, poverty, one of the worst human rights records in the hemisphere? Those are all the easy answers. But when you talk to the people of Haiti, they'll tell you that the critical factor was not him, but her, the first lady. Michel Venet. Michel came into the government through the bedroom and she brought down the government in five years. Every day, the elegant first lady was featured in scenes like this, launching vaccination campaigns, touring hospitals, giving her heart to the people. It was a powerful image that won over even such a symbol of saintliness as Mother Teresa. She took over literally this country and within one year, she had kicked out of the palace Jean-Claude's mother all of Jean-Claude's mother's relatives, 98 of them, were exiled. Is that the way she saw herself as a queen? I don't think she saw herself as anything less than that. For the first lady, she's a bum. Michelle Menez, she's a prostitute. She makes vodou to take jumper, and all the time she takes marijuana. This was Haiti last February, just after the dictator Baby Doc Duvalier fled the country. Spending money, millions and millions of dollars. Michelle Bennett, everybody called her is a lesbian. She was a devil. lesbian. She tried to, to eat all the t little children. She for sacrifice. Okay. That's what she meant. By sacrifice. So $60 million went for his and her personal use? Absolutely. Every but, year? Oh, yes. And that was just official open corruption because it was coming out of the budget. We intend to pursue the Duvaliers to the ends of the earth to bring back the wealth of the country. And we're giving them notice that wherever they go, no matter how long it takes, we will get the money back. interested in Michelle Binet, which was Baby Doc's wife. Especially when I mentioned that she would buy exotic furs in other countries just to wear it in Haiti. Haiti is a tropical island. I kid you not, they would turn the AC up in the palace, reserve a room for their furs, and have lavish parties with these furs. So when I mentioned that, everyone was like, oh no, tell us more about this lady. So. Woo child, grab your tea, grab your snacks, grab your pate, your diri, kole, your legume, your dujons, whatever. Because there's a lot to unpack here and woo child. She was born in 1950 to Aurora Ligon and her father, Ernest Bennett, heir descendants of King Henry Christophe I. So that is his great, great, great granddaughter. So of course you already know they definitely come from a well-off background. Her father owned about 500,000 acres of land, growing mostly coffee, and he employed over 1,500 people, with an additional 900 in just his business alone. Her uncle was also Roman Catholic Archbishop Jean-Francois Ligon. So as you can see, she's surrounded by wealth and notoriety, also light-skinned and a mixed race, which a lot of you guys can probably attribute to her success and we all know how Haiti is set up. It's more of a class situation than it is with race and way more of a colorism issue than it is with race because everyone is basically black or white on that island or of Hispanic or native type of origin. You're not gonna really see people having like racism issues. Since they are of mixed race, it is very easy to attribute their success with their mixed race. However, there are a lot of class issues and a lot of it has to do with uh, the mixed elite basically having the upper hand in terms of money, in terms of notoriety, in terms of government, in terms of wealth, so yeah. 
she comes from that type of background. When she was 15, she moved to New York. 1973, she went on to marry Alex Pasquet Jr. Now, this is a little controversial because in my Baby Doc video, I told you guys that Baby Doc's dad, Papa Doc, had harmed people in her family in a sense. And I guess this is the family I was thinking about or talking about because I didn't look into it when I did that video, but I guess it's all starting to click now. So Pasquette is the son of Captain Alex Pasquette. And Captain Alex is a well-known officer, who's also mixed, by the way, and Tuskegee Airmen. And in 1958, he led a failed coup against Papa Doc. So, how ironic is it that you end up marrying Papa Doc's son? Very questionable there. I mean, nonetheless, they ended up having two kids, which was, of course, Alex Pasquet III and um, Sasha. So they get a divorce for whatever reason, couldn't find anything on that. Y'all, I wanted to tea on that, but couldn't find anything. Later in 1978, they divorced and she landed a job in public relations in Haiti at a hotel. Oh, I have to look at this one. Habitation Leclerc. Did I say that right? Oh, I sounded mad Zeus was saying that. It's an upscale hotel in Puerto Prince. Even though they met in high school, they didn't start taking each other serious or seeing each other in that way until like about 10 years later. 1980, Michelle and Baby Doc got married. And as I said in my video, it was a lavish, like a fairy tale. The wedding cost over $3 million. And at the time, you already know $3 million is a lot more now than what it was then. The wedding went down in one of the most expensive weddings ever in the Guinness World Record. And people actually really liked her at this time people saw this as a fairy tale people were like in love with the idea of the couple being together however of course under the surface it was boiling for a lot of people that he married a mixed woman when his father was out here pushing for reform and pushing for the mixed people not having power so it's like him marrying a mixed woman it's like oh child bitch you just put a mixed woman in power so of course shit started to crumble okay shit went left after that although he was favored more than his father in a sense and although people really liked her people were really side-eyeing them shit didn't really go wrong until she started to basically be way way too full of herself she started to use the country's public channel to display her work of i guess philanthropy okay which is crazy because when you really think about it it's like so performative and so thick it's ridiculous it just annoys me that she put on such a performative act that even mother Teresa gave her a co-sign i just find this shit ridiculous like it, it i just can't believe it all the while she's raising money for charity but everyone is still poor she was literally embezzling this money like let's be real here everyone stayed hungry everyone stayed tired and but at the same time people were just watching her give to people so it's like what are you giving to because we ain't got shit at the time haiti did have only one channel they were able to control it in the palace so it's like they were forced to watch all of this and not only were they forced to watch that they really fucked up when they sat there and broadcasted one of their lavish like first class parties with all the elite around the world where they were giving out like thousands of dollars worth of jewels and thousands of dollars worth of champagne or krug as they like to call it so it's like at this point people got really really fed up with them and ooh child it was just bad now what's important to note is it wasn't just the public that was really fed up with her the palace was fed up with her internal politicians ministers were fed up with her because they would have these meetings okay to talk about politics to talk about haiti and it was like she would take over the meetings but at the same time, I can't really blame her because if you remember what I said in the previous video, Baby Doc was not interested in politics. He did not really care about this. This was a playboy become president, okay? He was 19 at the time. So it's like he was literally sitting here falling asleep at the meeting, 
not really speaking much. He was always said to be really soft spoken, pretty shy. He was completely opposite from his dad. So I guess she saw that opportunity and was like, you know what, if you're not gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But like she did not do it well at all, honey. She was spending her time cursing out government personnel, basically swindling money from the ministries that would attend. She would go around basically taking money from all of the businesses and they could never say no because they would probably shoot your shit up with the fuck on my food if you said no. Like she was literally exercising her power really drastically and it showed and his mom was completely opposed of this everyone in his family just was like not fond of her from the beginning but they started to really go back and forth and it got to the point where they got kicked out of the palace he rid his entire family of the palace like she literally kicked all of them out and of course that made her have a better grip on him and he was she was really able to control him she was so controlling that after they were married she forced him to go on a very strict diet and he lost 70 pounds and i i just feel i feel like that's just so fucked up like yeah he was a little fluffy okay he was big but it's like damn you married him while he was big though like i just she was just so controlling and so toxic. And it's funny, like when I was looking into all of this, all I was able to really find were newspapers. Not all, but like most of what I found was newspapers and books and stuff. And I just find it absolutely hilarious how much of a field day these journalists had with Baby Doc and Michelle. Like journalists all over the world, okay, from the United States to Europe, had so much fun like talking shit about them. Like literally, if you, I, I linked some of them below, you're gonna be like, bruh. An article I read called him, he was 19 and obese when he inherited Haiti from his dictator father. I'm like, damn, who writes that? Like 19 and obese? Like that's, y'all ain't had to do it like that. Like, you know, so it, I, I kind of feel bad for him in a sense because he was like always getting picked on. The press picking on you, your mother bossing you around, your wife picking on you, no one takes you serious. So it's just like, I, I, I kind of low-key feel bad for him, but it's like, damn, nigga, when you going to open your mouth and stand up for yourself? Because people was dragging him, okay? Dragging him left and right. He was being pulled in every corner. I'm surprised he even lasted to die a natural death. Because, well, I mean, I guess, like, it's a heart attack. What was it? Heart attack, diabetes, whatever. Eh, that's natural enough for me, okay? You ain't see people laughing at Papa Doc. People wouldn't dare giggle at that nigga. Like, but what, baby Doc? Field day. Definite field day. But um, yeah, despite all of this debauchery, they ended up having two kids, Anya and Nicola, Nicholas in English. Like I said, his father established the ideology of black power and he was going completely against it by marrying a mixed woman and having a kid with her at that. I, I feel like the kid probably fueled it because at this point we had Papa Doc, Baby Doc now. If he stays in power and he has a kid, we're going to have a mixed president, a mixed dictator, hell no. I feel like that was just too much for people to bear. They were just like, nah, bro, we're not, nah, 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 hell no. Nah. Nonetheless, the corruption caught up with them. So like I said, Michelle was out here flaunting her philanthropy, but also flaunting her riches at the same time. She's out here spending millions of dollars at a time on shopping sprees. Like I said, buying exotic furs. They got designer Louis Gucci Fenty. So like, not nah, Fenty wasn't thing at the time, but you get the point. They had designer. They had like all this stuff. Like they had money, like, and they were literally flaunting it and showing it on the public channel. And um, of course, things backfired. People started to revolt. And this literally fucked them up so badly to the point where they had to exile in the United States. Help them exile after 15 years of dictatorship. Let's not forget that they are estimated to have stolen at least $800 million during this 15-year dictatorship. I believe this is not even included Papa Doc. And um, it's very, very clear that a lot of this money is hidden away in bank accounts somewhere. And um, it's crazy because you can tell that they had so much money because the fucking palace became a playground. They were having costume parties, offering $10,000 gifts at the door, raffling like $5,000 jewelry. Like it was just a mess. What's really funny is they tried to seek asylum in numerous places in Europe and nobody wanted them, including France, okay? They tried to seek asylum in Greece, Switzerland, Spain, Morocco, and they all were like, mm -mm, we don't want you over here, honey. Like, they, ha, 
it's just so funny even france was like uh no but um they ended up staying there anyway but they denied them asylum so i guess they're just allowed to be like regular citizens of france Soon after they got to France, there was an investigation that was opened up about their, you know, connection with stealing money from Haiti. And Michelle was seen actually trying to flush documents down the toilet. Now, what was on these documents, you might ask? I need to read this because y'all want me to look at the fuck, okay? Her papers documented recent spending including 168,780,000 for Gavinci, for Gavinci, Gavinci, I'm broke and I can't afford it anyway, clothing, 270,200 in Bouchon jewelry, and over 9,752 for two children horse saddles at Hermes, okay? If this ain't some, oh my goodness, I was just like, y'all literally exiled for embezzling money and y'all still sat there and embezzled money. All right, cool. In 1990, Jean-Claude Duvalier, aka Baby Doc, actually did file for divorce against Michelle saying that she had, I quote, okay, I, I quote, he accused her of committing immoral acts, which is like, Y'all both immoral. Like, what, who, how dare you go and try to divorce me over immoral acts like we weren't both being immoral? Like, oh, child, he got some nerve. So, um, basically, he tried to do this in the Dominican Republic, and Michelle went over there to try to, like, contest the divorce. But let me just tell you guys right now, she was living with a whole nother man at the time, okay? Whole nother man at the time when she tried to reverse this, okay? She tried to reverse this divorce. She was living in Canes with a whole nother man. Like, sis, sit down, pipe down, relax. This shit don't even make any sense to me. It's ridiculous. It's it's clear here what was going on. I'm not gonna say it. Y'all can say it, but I'm not gonna say it. But um, anyway, the divorce was granted and he was ordered to pay child support to her. So, I mean, I guess she got something out of it. She was also awarded spousal support, aka alimony. What annoys me is in 1987, a French civil court basically dismissed a case from Haiti against the Duvaliers and it was just like what the fuck like I mean I guess it was the wrong court and that's literally what they said they were like why didn't you bring this to Haiti Supreme Court like why y'all bringing this all the way over here to us like I understand you're here but like this is not our jurisdiction we can't do nothing about this this is like beyond our limits type of thing which was like Ugh, whatever but I still feel like they should have dismissed it but I will say because of this their money ended up getting frozen everywhere so wherever they had their damn money, it was locked up and tied up in accounts and they did not have access to it, which is why it was believed that he went back to Haiti, you know, Baby Doc went back to Haiti and all of that extra shit. That is when investigations and cases were brought up against him. He ended up dying shortly after. But um, what's really not talked about, which is interesting to me, is how Michelle actually came back to Haiti around the earthquake as well. I'm trying to say that she wanted to help, but let's be real. Um, realistically, she was there for her own personal shit. Her brother, Rudy Bennett, in the rubble of Hotel Montana. Not sure if she found him or not, but I mean, at least she showed up to Jean-Claude's funeral. She came with her two kids. And yeah, the funeral was held on October 11th, 2014. Now, I thought that this was the last of her. I would never find her again until you guys told me. She got Facebook. So I went and I looked it up and I'm just like, First of all, she has over a hundred thousand followers. Second of all, she uses her platform to literally like think about the glory golden days of her embezzling money from Haiti. It really annoys me because like she spends a lot of her time basically posting throwback photos, writing legit dissertation. I'm not joking. I'm not over exaggerating. Legit dissertations about her time at the palace, her time as first lady, talking about politics and the current state of Haiti. Her heart aches for Haiti because it's so poor and that, that, that. I'm just like, y'all are part of the reason it's like that. You and all the other crooked politicians that have stolen money from Haiti is the reason, okay? Part of the reason why Haiti is the way it is. You got some nerve. She was sitting, like she'll literally sit there and write like 
whole philanthropic pose trying to be like, oh, my heart hurts, baby, and how it is right now. Mr. President Jovenel, we need to do something about this. Back when I was in the palace, he was in such a better place. What? Like, who are you? Oh, child, if I was Jovenel, I would have washed that ass because who are you? You're the wife of a dictator, ex-wife of a dictator. I wonder why. Get mine while I was off. That's what I would have said to her because it's just ridiculous to me. And what really annoys me is like all her posts are in French. And like, I understand French is one of the languages of Haiti, but I don't trust any Haitian who don't speak or type in Creole. If all your points have to be made in then I don't trust you. Okay, I just don't. Only because I feel like the whole French speaking thing is like a, a slap in the face. I feel like we were always forced to speak French or learn French so that we can be more proper, you know, so we can kind of like assimilate with the masses, you know, so we can be seen as, I guess, like less barbaric. And it's like, mm, I don't give a shit. I don't give a right to ask. When I have to, okay? Like, I just don't care for it. I learned it. I know it. I can read it. I can speak it. I can interact in it. It's just, I don't care for it because I'm Haitian. 365, I can speak Creole. Why the fuck I gotta speak French for it? Like, I just don't think it does anything. Unless it's on a fucking job resume or for a job, I don't think speaking French does much of anything for me. So any Haitian that's out here, I don't care, okay? I don't want to hear it. I don't trust you. I just don't. A lot of y'all may not agree with me, but I don't care. That's why this is my video, okay? She's really sitting there trying to act like the Duvalier regime was the best thing. And I would read one of her posts or even post one of her posts, but I can't. Because she has this whole like copyright at the end of all her posts. I don't know if it's real or not. It probably isn't, but I just ain't got time. Because she looked like the type of sender to my coot to my house but you guys can literally check her up on facebook like look her up all the kids have facebook as well the only ones that are active are her and nicola and what's funny about this is um oh yeah so we might have another divalier issue okay because he's uh apparently trying to run for president next term of haiti and i'm just like now i know we shouldn't judge these kids based off of their parents but no, just no. We can't have no more Duvaliers in the palace. Like, I, oh, child. I just don't got time. Oh, man, that shit made me tired. I was sitting there like, oh, God. Like, but I mean, I might say he is kind of handsome. You know, I was like, oh, okay. He's kind of cute. Look just like his dad. He's very political. And he's already starting to, like, you know, try to win over the people. His posts are very similar to his mom's, except they're not like dissertations. They're more like, you know, persuasive essays. A lot shorter and he's like taking pictures with people, taking pictures with politicians and important people, posted on his page. So it's just like, mm, I guess he's like trying to kiss ass and warm up and all of that. You know, things you do before an election. And I'm just like, oh God, I just, I just, oh, like I understand that they could probably do some good, but it's like, given the history, no, just no, 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 no. I'm 100% against it. Like, comment down below. What do you guys think about this? Like, what do you think would happen if Nicola actually ran for president in Haiti and won? Do you think it would be a repeat? Do you think it would be better? Do you think it would be worse? I'm, I'm just not for it. I would just rather be safe than sorry. And, um, yeah, that's just my opinion on it. Let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comment section below. Do you guys agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Why or why not? Also, what do you know about Michelle Bennett that I did not include in this video? I didn't include any scandalous crazy shit in regards to her sexuality or her infidelity because I feel like that's slander at a point. And I just couldn't see too many clear stories about it in terms of the people I asked, so I just left that out. But I mean, we free to kick key in the comment section, so... But yeah, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that, and I'm going to see y'all next time.